congratulations! You have just purchased one of the finest riding lawnmowers on the market. These rugged, compact machines are built for the rigors of daily operation and are ideal for mowing landscaped properties with rolling contours, irregular shapes, tight corners, and open spaces. Walker mowers are not just assembled, they're engineered. Every detail has been proven in the field and design elements have been tested and refined. As a result, each mower is highly reliable, properly tuned, and manufactured to give top mowing performance for many years. But before you take a seat on your walker and enjoy a truly unique mowing experience, take a few moments to review these operating procedures and reminders. These will enable you to take full advantage of all of the walker mower's features and quickly become a proficient operator. First, a note regarding safety. Before operating a walker mower, you should thoroughly review your walker operator's manual, including all safety reminders, operation instructions, and instructional decals. Please take the time to watch this video in its entirety and then review the safety reminders and decal descriptions available in your walker operator's manual. If necessary, replacement manuals are available on our website or through your local walker dealer. Let's begin with the components and controls of the walker mower. Every walker mower consists of the tractor, an attached mowing deck or other seasonal add-ons like a snowblower or dozer blade, and on models S, C, T, and D, the grass handling system. Models R, B, and H do not include a grass handling system. Operator controls. The operator controls consist of the forward speed control, which controls the forward travel speed, the steering levers, which control travel direction, the PTO clutch, which engages or disengages the mower blades or power attachment, the parking brake, the throttle, and for some carbureted engines, a choke lever. No choke lever is needed on fuel injected or diesel engines. As you can see, all controls are positioned comfortably within reach of the operator. Each walker mower is equipped with a variety of gauges, indicators, and switches located either on the front body panel or instrument panel. Refer to your operator's manual for full details. If your walker is equipped with options like headlights, high dump, power dump, or implement hitch, these controls will be located on the front body panel, instrument panel, or other convenient location. Refer to your operator's manual or other supplemental documentation for full details. Deck components. The primary components of the mowing deck consist of the carrier frame, deck housing, blade drive gearboxes or belts and pulleys, mowing blades, footrests, deck cutting height pins, deck lock levers, tilt up handle, tilt up latch, and the tilt up hook. To access the blades, raise the mowing deck by unlocking the two deck lock levers on the deck carrier frame. On model H decks, use the deck lift bar to unlock the deck lock arms. Using the carrier frame lift handle or deck lift bar, raise the deck to the tilt up position and insert the tilt up hook into the tilt up latch on the tractor body. Model R decks are secured using two tilt-up links inserted into the keyhole on the chassis side. Where available, use the provided deck lift bar when raising the deck. This acts as a lever, making lifting the deck much easier. When using the deck lift bar, always use the pin to lock the bar in place. The same pin is also used to secure the bar in its stowed position. An optional power tilt-up deck lift is available for Model H mowers. When lifting the deck using the power tilt-up, carefully follow the provided operating instructions and adhere to decals and warnings. With the deck tilted up and latched, the cutting blades, deck housing, and chute may be inspected and maintained. Never move the tractor with the deck in the tilt-up position. Likewise, do not tilt the tractor body forward with the deck in the tilt-up position. Remember, always use caution and proper lifting techniques when lifting and lowering the deck keep a straight back and lift using your legs. To lower the deck, reverse the tilt-up sequence. 
always ensure the deck lock levers are in the locked position when the mower is in operation. For additional details on deck components, refer to your operator's manual. Body components. The body may be tilted open to provide full access to the engine, drivetrain, belts, battery, and hydrostatic transmissions. To open the body, ensure there are no objects or obstructions on or around the mower and that the deck is not tilted up. If your mower is equipped with GHS, ensure the grass catcher is empty and lift it to the dump position. Locate the body release latch. For models C, T, D, R, and H, the latch is located behind or beside the operator seat. For models S and B, the latch is located on the chassis side panel behind the right drive tire. Release the body latch and either push forward on the seat back or lift the body using the rear body handle. For maintaining your walker's engine, drivetrain, and other internal components, please refer to your operator's manuals. If your walker needs to be pushed or towed while powered down, you may engage the transmission lockouts, allowing the drive tires to freewheel. With the transmission lockouts engaged, do not run the engine above idle and do not move the mower faster than one mile per hour. Doing so can produce excessive internal pressure and damage the transmission. With the body in the open position, locate your transmission lockout levers. On models equipped with Eaton transmissions, look for the lockout levers on each transmission. Lift the transmission lockout lever to its highest position on both the right-hand and left-hand transmissions and secure them into place with the locking cams. The levers must be in the highest position to completely unlock the transmissions. On models equipped with hydro gear transmissions, look for the lockout levers located on the chassis crossmember. Pull each lever and slide them over the notches to engage the lockout. The mower is now in neutral and may be pushed or towed slowly and with caution after disengaging the parking brake. After moving the mower, return the lockout levers to the normal operating position. On models equipped with Eaton transmissions, make sure that the transmission lockout plunger on the side of the transmission case, activated by the lockout lever, is completely released. Otherwise, the transmission operation will be erratic. To close the body, reverse the action used for tilting it open. Keep all body parts and bystanders clear and smoothly lower the body to the closed position. The body latch will re-engage automatically. You may need to apply some downward force to ensure the body is securely latched in the closed position. GHS Components The grass handling system, known as GHS, consists of a rear discharge collection mowing deck, a deck discharge chute, an internal grass blower, a catcher delivery chute, the oscillating power fill delivery spout, the grass pack vane switch, full signal horn, removable exhaust screen, and grass catcher assembly. For GHS equipped models, do not operate the machine with the grass catcher in the dump position or with the catcher door open. Dangerous projectiles may be thrown out of the blower discharge chute or the back of the grass catcher. An optional no-catch deflector may be installed on the catcher door opening if non-collection operation is desired. To dump grass from the GHS catcher, open the back door by lifting on the door handle. Tilt the catcher back to dump by lifting on the catcher lift handle on the lower front corner of the catcher. Once empty, lower the catcher smoothly down to the normal operating position. Do not allow the catcher to drop down. The gas spring that holds the catcher in the raised position is not a shock absorber for lowering the catcher. Close the door by pulling down on the door handle. Be careful to keep fingers and hands away from the hinge and pinch points when the door is being closed. Also, keep fingers and hands clear of the door frame. The door should close smoothly with the assistance of the dampening gas springs. If the dampening springs are not functioning properly, allowing the door to slam shut, they should be replaced immediately. This will help prevent injury to the operator and damage to the door structure. Prepare for operation. 
Now that we are acquainted with the walker mower's components and controls, let's prepare for operation. But first, a few important reminders. Never allow children to operate the walker mower. Likewise, do not allow adults to operate the mower without proper instruction. When operating the walker mower, always use appropriate personal protective equipment, including ear protection, safety glasses, proper footwear, and adequate protective clothing. Do not wear open-toed shoes or loose-fitting clothing that could get caught in moving parts. Refer to your operator's manual for full operator protection instructions. Finally, operate the mower only in daylight or in good artificial light with full visibility of the area being mowed. Prior to starting your walker mower, ensure the fuel level is sufficient. When fueling your walker mower, remember, Gasoline is highly flammable and its vapors are explosive. Store gasoline in an approved fuel container and always refuel in a well-ventilated area. Never add fuel when the engine is running or hot. Allow a hot engine to cool several minutes before fueling. Keep matches, cigarettes, cigars, pipes, open flames, or sparks away from the fuel tank and fuel containers. Always use fresh, unleaded fuel not exceeding 10% ethanol. Fill only to the bottom of the fuel tank neck. Be careful not to spill fuel and use a funnel or spout if necessary. Replace the mower's fuel cap and container cap securely and clean up any spilled fuel before starting the engine. Give your mower a final inspection prior to operation. Check tire inflation, fuel level, and fuel cap security. Lift the grass catcher or body and check the engine oil. Ensure that the air filter system is intact and secure. Do not disturb the air filter elements unless the air restriction gauge is in the red range. Not all models include an air restriction gauge. For these models, refer to your operator's manual for maintenance instructions. Check that the grass catcher exhaust screen is clear. If necessary, remove it for cleaning if clogged or dirty. Check for and clean grass buildup from underneath the mower deck. Also, check mower blades for sharpness and security. If something looks out of place or needs repair, do not operate your walker mower until it has been inspected by your local walker servicing dealer. Keep all protective shields and safety devices in place. If a protective shield, safety device, or decal is damaged, unusable, or missing, repair or replace it before operating the machine. Driving and maneuvering. To start the walker mower, first, sit in the operator's seat. Step on the areas of the mowing deck marked with traction pads and swing one leg over the steering levers while lowering yourself into the operator's seat. If your walker is equipped with adjustable footrests or armrests, ensure they are positioned for comfort and ease of operation. If your walker mower is equipped with a rollover protection system, also known as ROPS, ensure the ROPS is locked in the full upright position and securely fasten your seatbelt low and tight across your waist. Keep your feet on the deck footrests at all times when the tractor is moving or the mower blades are operating. Never operate the tractor without a deck or add-on installed. Before turning the ignition switch to the start position, check to make sure the forward speed control is in the neutral park position, the PTO clutch is disengaged, and the parking brake is engaged. Be sure the interlock safety switches are functioning correctly. The engine should not start unless the forward speed control lever is in the neutral park position, the PTO clutch is in the disengaged position, and the parking brake is engaged. Also, the engine should stop if the operator lifts off the seat with any of these controls in the operating position. If any of the safety switches are not functioning as described in the operator's manual, they should be repaired or replaced before further operation. Do not disconnect the safety switches, they're for the operator's protection. Locate the throttle lever beside the operator's seat. Moving the lever forward towards the fast position increases engine speed. Moving it backwards towards the idle position decreases engine speed. The throttle should be set to one quarter to one half above idle for starting the engine. 
For models equipped with a manual choke, move the choke lever to the on position to start a cold engine. Turn the ignition switch to the start position. As soon as the engine starts, release the key to the run position. Do not crank the engine more than 10 seconds at a time. If the engine does not start, turn the key to the off position and allow a 60 second cooldown period between starting attempts. For models equipped with the choke, gradually move the choke towards the off position, keeping enough choke on to allow the engine to run smoothly as it warms up. As soon as possible, move the choke to the off position. When the engine is idling smoothly, you are ready for operation. Do not run the engine in a confined area without adequate ventilation. Exhaust fumes are hazardous and can be deadly. Before mowing grass, you should be comfortable and confident in your ability to drive the walker mower. Its control system may be different than what you're used to, so take a few moments to get familiar with basic operations. For a beginner operator, learn to maneuver the tractor with a slow engine speed before attempting any mowing operation. Be aware that with the front-mounted mower configuration, the back of the tractor swings to the outside during turns. Remember, do not carry passengers. Maximum seating capacity is one person. Finally, watch for holes, rocks, and roots in the terrain and for other hidden hazards. When mowing tall grass, mow higher than desired to expose any hidden obstacles. Then clean the area and mow to the desired height. The walker mower is driven using two primary controls, the forward speed control lever and two steering levers. The forward speed control has two functions, to establish the neutral park position and to set the forward travel speed. Move the lever forward to increase forward travel speed and backward to decrease it. A friction lock holds the forward speed control in place once the desired travel speed is selected. Moving the lever fully backwards to the neutral park position will stop the machine. Note that the forward speed control sets the forward position of the steering levers. For an emergency stop or in case of loss of control, the machine can always be stopped quickly and safely by pulling the forward speed control lever back into the neutral park position. The steering levers control the drive wheels only when they are pulled backward. Pushing the levers forward will not cause any change in tractor motion. Pulling the left lever back will slow, stop, and then reverse the left wheel, resulting in a left turn. Pulling the right lever back will slow, stop, and then reverse the right wheel, resulting in a right turn. Pulling both levers back will slow, then momentarily stop the mower. Pulling the levers further back will cause the mower to go into reverse. Releasing backward pressure on the levers will allow the mower to resume the forward speed selected by the forward speed control. Notice the operator is using only the fingers of the left hand to pull the steering levers while keeping the right hand on the forward speed control. This is the correct way to operate a walker mower. The use of two hands on the steering levers tends to cause over control. When operating the walker, avoid sudden starts or stops. Before backing the machine up, Look to the rear to be sure no one is behind the machine. Watch carefully for traffic when crossing or working near roadways. When moving forward, do not suddenly put the tractor in reverse by rapidly pulling on the steering levers, especially when going downhill, as this can lift the tail wheel off the ground and set up a bucking motion due to operator over control. If bucking does occur, it can be immediately stopped by pulling the forward speed control lever fully back into the neutral park position. Now that the walker mower's control system has been explained, it's time to practice maneuvering the machine. First, disengage the parking brake. Keep the engine RPMs low and gradually move the forward speed control setting forward. As you begin, keep your speed low until you are better acquainted with the controls. Note, if the parking brake does not release when the lever is in the disengaged position, Gently move the machine forward or backward to free the brake. Start maneuvering the mower by pulling gently on the steering lever on the side of the desired turn. The precise nature of the steering system does not require large movements or high force. Remember, do not push forward on the steering levers. To minimize the possibility of over control, use only the left hand to control both steering levers with the right hand remaining on the forward speed control. 
Practice turning the mower to the left, then the right, and then reverse the direction of the mower by pulling both levers backward together. Practice maneuvering in an open area until you feel confident on your walker mower. Learn to operate the mower with your left hand resting on the steering levers and right hand on the forward speed control. Operate the levers with a smooth action to avoid slipping or skidding the tires. Jerky movements are hard on the transmissions and the lawn. When making a tight turn, first, slow the machine's forward speed down. Any mower moving at high speed cannot quickly change directions without possible loss of control and turf damage. To perform a true zero radius turn, pull the steering lever controlling the inside wheel into reverse for a smooth rolling turn, with one wheel rolling forward and the other rolling backwards. While mowing alternating stripes on a property, the turn at the end of a row should be accomplished by first turning towards the next row while slowing speed, entering a zero turn, and then accelerating straight into the next row of uncut grass. For any maneuver, do not allow the inside tire to stop and twist in one spot. This will damage the grass. Practice turning and maneuvering your walker mower. Notice how easily it turns and the precision of the steering controls. It is this degree of control that gives the walker superior maneuverability. When you can make the mower go exactly where you are aiming, without slipping the tires, you've taken the first step toward becoming a skilled walker operator. Park the mower by pulling the forward speed control lever fully back to the neutral park position and engage the parking brake. Make sure to stop the tractor completely before engaging the parking brake, and always engage the parking brake before starting or stopping the engine. Remember, for an emergency stop or in case of loss of control, machine movement can always be stopped quickly by pulling the forward speed control into the neutral park position. Hydrostatic transmissions are susceptible to creep, especially on hills or slopes. Always engage the parking brake when stopped on a slope or when transporting the mower on a trailer. If the machine is creeping backward or forward with the forward speed control in the neutral park position on a flat surface, or if the machine won't track straight ahead on flat ground, the transmissions are out of adjustment. They should be readjusted by following the procedure in the operator's manual or by your walker dealer prior to further operation. Before dismounting your walker mower, make sure to disengage the PTO, pull the forward speed control lever to the neutral park position, and engage the parking brake. Move the throttle lever to idle, turn off the ignition switch, and make sure the PTO has stopped turning before getting off the mower. Mowing Now that you are acquainted with the controls and how the mower operates, it's time to put it to work mowing grass. Ensure the area to be mowed is clear of any foreign objects, which may be picked up and thrown by the mowing blades. Remove all sticks, stones, wire, and any other debris. Do not operate the walker mower with bystanders in the area. Keep everyone, especially children and pets, a safe distance away from the area being mowed. Some machines are equipped with a PTO clutch lever located on the right side of the seat that is used to engage and disengage the mower blades or power detachment. On some models, pulling the lever up engages the PTO that drives the mower blades. Pushing the lever down disengages the PTO and engages the blade brake. On others, the clutch is engaged by pushing the PTO clutch lever forward and disengaged by pulling the lever back. Some machines are equipped with an electric blade clutch, located on the front of the mower body. Pull the clutch switch knob outward to engage the blades or power detachment, and push to disengage. Set the engine throttle to approximately one-third speed, and engage the PTO clutch. For machines with a PTO clutch lever, always use a slow, firm motion when engaging the clutch. Once the blades are engaged, increase the engine speed to full throttle. When mowing, Always operate the engine at full throttle. This allows the engine to produce full horsepower and optimizes the efficiency of the engine cooling system. To maximize the life of the PTO clutch and brake, engage and disengage the clutch with the throttle at one-third speed. As a safety check, test the operation of the blade brake before operating the mower. With the engine running at full speed and the mower blades engaged, disengage the PTO clutch. 
The PTO and cutting blades should stop within 5 seconds. Have the blade brake serviced by your walker dealer if the blades do not stop within 5 seconds. As you approach a tree or other object, reduce your forward speed and maneuver around it. By slowing down before turning, using smooth control movements, and keeping the inside tire moving, there will be no damage to the turf. Avoid mowing around overhanging tree branches or bushes at the same height as the operator's torso and head, where inadvertent contact may cause injury. The walker mower's low center of gravity and superior traction allow excellent results on slopes. Be certain to reduce your travel speed on a slope and use caution when starting, stopping, and maneuvering. Avoid sharp turns or sudden changes of direction while on slopes. Do not operate the machine on slopes greater than 15 degrees or 27% grade. Do not mow, dump grass, or operate the machine within 5 feet 1.5 meters of an embankment, retaining wall with a drop-off, or any body of water. This is a no-driving zone. Disengage the PTO clutch when transporting the machine across drives, sidewalks, or other hard surfaces. If you are mowing with a side discharge deck, make sure to keep the discharge shield at the lowest possible position to deflect grass clippings and thrown objects downward. Always operate with the side discharge shield in place. Bystanders may be injured or property damaged by projectiles. Always orient the side discharge away from sidewalks or streets to minimize cleanup of clippings. For best mowing results, we recommend you always mow with sharp blades, use an alternating stripe pattern, keep the mower deck and chutes clean, and avoid cutting too low. For best appearance, cut off no more than one-third of the existing grass height. In addition, remember to keep the tractor at full throttle and maintain smooth steering control to avoid skidding or slipping tires. If the cutting blades strike a solid object, or the machine begins to vibrate abnormally, immediately disengage the PTO clutch, stop the engine, and wait for all moving parts to stop. To prevent accidental starting, remove the ignition key. Thoroughly inspect the mower and repair any damage before restarting the engine and operating the mower. Make sure the cutting blades are in good condition and the blade nuts or bolts are tight. On gear-driven decks, blade nuts should be torqued to 60 pounds per feet or 81 newton meters. For belt-driven decks, blade bolts should be torqued to 70 pounds per feet or 95 newton meters. In case a transmission drive belt breaks during operation on a slope, the machine may freewheel down the slope. To slow this movement, immediately move the forward speed control to the neutral park position while simultaneously releasing the steering levers. When the machine is stopped or moving slowly, engage the parking brake. Remember, the emergency stop procedure is exactly the same procedure as used to normally stop and park this machine. To change the cutting height, disengage the PTO clutch and bring the mower to a full stop. Engage the parking brake, turn the engine off, and remove the ignition key. Now, change the position of the deck height hitch pins on the four deck support pins. Use the lift handles on the deck housing to raise the deck while positioning the hitch pins. Refer to the deck height adjustment decal for the desired cutting height. For decks equipped with a deck height adjuster, raise the deck to its highest locked position. Move the deck height adjustment pin to the desired height and lower the deck with the release lever. Remember, never adjust cutting height with the engine running. Before adjusting cutting height or servicing, disengage the PTO clutch, set the parking brake, stop the engine, and remove the ignition key. Wait for all movement to stop before getting off the seat. As you mow with the grass handling system, the blower moves the cut grass from the rear discharge deck chute into the grass catcher where an oscillating power fill spout uniformly fills the catcher. A horn will sound when the catcher is full. When you hear the horn, disengage the PTO clutch to avoid overfilling the catcher and clogging the internal chutes. Travel to your desired dump location and safely bring the mower to a stop and engage the parking brake. Get off the machine and dump the grass catcher. When using a dump bag, hook the bottom of the bag over the rear bumper while lifting on the handle strap. 
open the back door by lifting on the door handle. Position the bag around the door frame and then tilt the catcher back into the bag by lifting on the handle on the front of the catcher with one hand and holding the bag strap with the other. After dumping, lower the catcher smoothly down to the normal operating position and close the grass catcher door. To check the full signal and power fill function, the engine must be off with the parking brake engaged. Turn the ignition key to the on position and engage the PTO clutch. Open the back door of the grass catcher and gently block the vane on the oscillating power fill delivery spout. You should hear the horn signal as the vane is triggered. Remember, only perform this test with the engine off. When mowing with the grass handling system, keep the catcher door closed to contain thrown objects. For the same reason, never operate the grass handling system with the catcher in the dump position. In some conditions, especially when mowing heavy, wet grass, the grass handling system may clog. If a clog has occurred, the blower sound will change tone and the mower deck will begin to leave a trail of grass clippings. If this happens, disengage the PTO clutch, stop the mower, engage the parking brake, stop the engine, and remove the ignition key. Make sure all driveline movement has stopped before leaving the seat. Clogging may occur at the back of the mowing deck, the deck discharge chute, the GHS blower, the body chute, the grass catcher chute, or the power fill spout. Tilt up the mower deck to clear any blockages in the deck or deck discharge chute. Next, raise the catcher and the front body to clear any blockages in the blower, the body chute, grass catcher chute, or the power fill delivery spout. Never place your hands into the GHS blower. Use an appropriate tool to remove clogged material from the blower. If the grass handling system is routinely clogging, first make sure that the blades are installed correctly and that the blade wings are not excessively worn. Then inspect the interior of the deck and all shoots from the deck into the catcher to make sure there is no obstruction or excessive material buildup. Next, check that the catcher exhaust screen is not excessively dirty or clogged and clean if necessary. For improved performance in wet conditions, an optional exhaust screen with larger holes is available. Other causes of clogging may be worn or bent blower wheel blades or a deck cutting height that is too low. Remember, when operating a walker mower, or any mower for that matter, safety always comes first. To conclude this training program, let's review some of the most critical safety guidelines and operating limitations for the machine. Always be aware of your surroundings. Pay special attention to and keep a safe distance from all passers-by and bystanders. Always make sure to shut off the engine, set the parking brake, and remove the ignition key whenever working around or inside the tractor. Never put your hands or feet under the mower deck and keep hands away from the blower discharge chute. Do not operate the mower if the operator present safety system is not working. It must be operating to protect the operator. Avoid mowing around overhanging tree branches or bushes at the same height as the operator's torso and head where inadvertent contact may cause injury. Do not mow, dump grass, or operate the machine within 5 feet 1.5 meters of an embankment, retaining wall with a drop-off, or any body of water. This is a no-driving zone. Do not operate the mower on slopes steeper than 15 degrees or 27% grade. If your walker mower is equipped with a rollover protection system, also known as ROPS, keep the roll bar in the upright position when operating and always use the seat belt when the roll bar is upright. One final note, take a moment to review the operator's manual that came with your walker. The operator's manual will walk you through the same operating and safety procedures and further explain how to take advantage of the walker mower's many features. All maintenance and service requirements are also explained in the manual. Be aware that a properly maintained machine is essential for safe operation, optimum performance, and long life. Thank you for choosing the Walker Mower. A well-maintained and properly operated walker will help you experience fast, easy, beautiful mowing for years to come.